are here live at the state soccer tournament on day one of the girls' action. We just got done taking in the 1A games. Uh, it's a beautiful day out here, and it seemed like everybody was up for it, right, Siebs? Yeah, what a day. What a start to the event. What a start to the week. Gorgeous weather. Some good good games action-wise, competitive games, and uh, it's been a good day so far. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the 1A uh, stuff is, as it just wrapped up, the 2A folks are coming in. This is Blake's favorite time of the year, right? You just love it when it's uh, just like packed with fans and everybody from all over the state. Yeah, I love the end of the 1A games and everybody starts showing up for the 2A. And then here in about two hours, it'll be the 2A games are wrapping up and all the 3A teams will start showing up. So a ton of people, um, celebrations, roars, shrieks from all corners of County Soccer Complex. Um, and, uh, well, that's a great great transition uh, segue into our Des Moines Christian Van Meter matchup that we took in. in uh, seated number two was Des Moines Christian against the Van Meter number seven. Um, and before we even start, the Des Moines Christian uh, hooligans, uh, their supporter section was incredible, right, Blake? Yeah, best uh, so far best student section that uh, has made it down here. So... Two A games are kicking off, three A games in a little bit, but as of now, uh, the hooligans from Des Moines Christian, the Lions, are uh, leading that. We've got the biggest roar. Um, so, uh, what did you think about the game, Siebs? Yeah, so um, it was interesting, right? We talked, uh, it was a matchup from earlier this season when Des Moines Christian, um, Des Moines Christian beat uh, Van Meter, didn't they? Um, yeah, it was 5 0. 4 0. 4 0. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Delay, cause somebody had said 5. I, was like, oh, I thought it was 4. But mm. yeah, so we were, we were um, it was an interesting matchup. And to start out the game, you know, Van Meter scores a goal, maybe what, 15 minutes or so in, but unfortunately gets, oh, it got called back. And then yeah. a few minutes later, they hit the bar. And 30 seconds later, the ball ends up in the back of the net for yeah, it was, Jenna Roberts. Yeah, really unfortunate for Van Meter, for the Bulldogs there. So uh, the actual sequence of events was offside for the Bulldogs. And then the Lions turn around, march down the field, and score it. So that made it 1 0. Uh, then Soccer, short, cruel game. We always talk about oh, right? so one cruel. end. Uh, the goal, get, goal gets called back, and then 30 seconds later, the ball's in the net. Yeah, and then it just continued for him as well, because then uh, Van Meter was, I mean, they looked like they were really back in the game at a certain point, um, and absolutely smashed one off the crossbar uh, late in the uh, uh, first half there, which then turned, uh, as it happens, Dwayne Christian came back down and scored, make it 2-0. So in, in the halftime, down 2-0, boss Tim Jacobs for Van Meter uh, wasn't... He didn't have a lot that he was planning to do, right? He thought he would uh, just go back out there and handle it as is because they were they were creating chances and doing well. Yeah, the scoreline didn't really indicate it was a 2-0 game. So, um, but like you said, yep, the staff over there at Van Meter didn't really switch a whole a lot of things up. And um, Dwayne Christian, interestingly enough, uh, Dan Webster, our good friend, the second time we've talked to him now, uh, they put a fourth. Uh, player in midfield, so tactically it made a couple changes. Yeah, so I, I'm assuming that means they went from a 4-3-3 to a 4-4-2. Uh, so maybe protecting their lead a little bit. Um, it mentioned another player on the other team, Mary, who I, I didn't, uh, I didn't get the last name on that one, but they were trying to shut somebody down, so they thought that that would be a good, good route to do so. Um, and I mean, ultimately, a game like that when it's down 2-0, basically it's kind of like next goal really determines the game. So if the, the team that's winning scores to make it 3-0, it's a tough way back for the losing team. But uh, if that uh, the team that's down can scrape back in, that, that can be trouble for the, the team. So uh, ended up not being the case, unfortunately, for the Bulldogs and Van Meter. Um, instead, Des Moines Christian scored that, that third, third goal. one and, yeah, put it away and... And Van Meter got a consolation, but um, yep, three one there. Um, what game you want to talk to next? Talk well, so uh, Dyke New Hartford um, first trip to state. Friend of the pod, so Sophie Hoffman going to South Dakota State. Yep, um, they took on Underwood. I don't even know where that is to be honest, but it that was the, uh, the the three six matchup. I can't see. Yeah, that for yep. You. So they're the, they're the one, that winner is going to play Des Moines Christian, and um, Underwood came out just um, on fire. Go up 2-0, then get a third to go up 3-1, or 3-0. And then um, Dyke New Harper comes storming back and actually made an unbelievable frantic last maybe 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, Underwood actually also first-time qualifier for the state tournament. Uh, young squad, uh, their top six goal scorers are freshmen and sophomores. Uh, their freshman, um, Tealier Hull, has 28 goals already on the season, which is uh, pretty amazing as a freshman. Yeah, that is. So, yep, um, ultimately, Underwood comes up, comes up top victorious 
they did get a late equal or late um, additional. What do they call that? Um, nail in the coffin. Goal. There you yeah. go. Nail in the coffin. <laughs> Four two. Um, but I mean, pretty cool. Like a field was right here next to us, and they brought Dyke New Hartford. Definitely brought the fans. Underwood did too. There's a bunch of college coaches in attendance watching um, players from both schools. It sounded like, and as we talked to, so good little good little game there. So now you got Des Moines Christian against Underwood on Thursday. Um, 10 15. That's right. Uh, let's move up to the top half of the bracket. Um, Davenport Assumption, uh, seated number one, took on Center Point Urbana. Davenport Assumption, uh, I read that they have not lost a 1A game since 2015. This, uh, they're looking for their sixth straight state tournament championship, and they haven't lost a postseason game under their current coach. Elizabeth Miles, she's 33-0 and 0 in the postseason. That's wild. I mean, they have traditional powerhouse, and clearly there's a reason why. Yeah, um, I think the other thing that's really cool about that is that Elizabeth Mouse, God, I'm probably getting her name wrong. Yeah, Elizabeth Mouth, Mouse, um, she actually won two state titles uh, for Davenport Assumption back in the early 2000s, in 2002 and 2003. So uh, a former winner kind of translating uh, some of her powers onto the squad. Also love uh, when we get a female coach coaching the girls. There's just not enough of that out there, so super cool. Um, you talk a little bit about Center Point Urbana quick. Yeah, they had their hands full, though, with the Storm and Pointers, which <laughs> easily is the best nickname of the uh, the week, I think. But um, score a goal there, I don't know. We could we could kind of hear it and see it a little bit vaguely. Um, it went up 1-0 in the first half and held on and um, took care of business. Yep, no doubt about that. Um, so Davenport Assumption will then take on uh, Nevada, who won 1-0 over Bishop Helan, and that was your sort of your 4-5 uh, matchup. So number five, uh, Nevada, holding on for a 1-0 victory, and uh, that was we we saw Nevada go up 1-0, um, and then shortly thereafter a penalty called against them. Yeah, late there in the second half, and what a save by the goalkeeper. Yeah, um, Maddie. Uh, we we had a nice little interview with her. I'm gonna tell this you is right a good. Well, Ben looks at it, this is a good plug. We did talk to a bunch of the girls on these teams um, underneath the tent. So, be sure to kind of a press conference type um, environment. Yeah, super cool. Maddie uh, Dunham, senior, uh, pre uh, preserving her her last couple of high school games. Right, she gets, gets to go on and play one more uh, at least. So. And, yeah, we've got a big traditional powerhouse matchup now. We've got Nevada against Davenport Assumption on the top half and kind of some newcomers in Des Moines Christian and Underwood in the second uh, second part of that bracket. Yeah, so we'll be looking forward to getting back on Thursday to check out the semifinal action. Um, let's move on and talk about some 2A here, Siebs. Let's do it. All right, back again live here at County in Des Moines for a little 2A recap. Uh, we just watched uh, the Norwalk Warriors take on the Lewis Central I don't know their what's their what's their mascot do we know Titans. the Titans Titans okay let's say Titans for now uh, we got to watch that game but then um, what else do we have going on today we had Dow Center Grimes playing North Polk uh, Spencer and Sea Rapid Xavier Waverly Shell Rock and North Scott and then as we said we took on took in Norwalk and Lewis Central we've also got uh, Norwalk legend Case and Crawl here Kaysen trains a lot of the girls, but then also uh, graduated from Norwalk back in what year, Kaysen? 2017. Did you ever win state, Kaysen? <laughs> a couple times. A couple? O only two? Three. <laughs> hey, that's what we were talking about right there. Uh, well, thanks for joining us. We yeah. really appreciate it. We know you, uh, you've you got the insight. Yeah, is this the first time you've ever been on a pod? I believe so. Yeah. Oh. Ooh, he well, was nervous. He was a little nervous, yeah. He was kick it forward, so yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> Good deal. Well, let's uh, let's just we'll start down at the bottom of the bracket and talk through our uh, our viewing of uh, third seeded Norwalk as they took on Lewis Central, who's yep. the sixth seed. Um, what did you see, Casey? I mean, you know, it, it was a, a tough first half for sure, right? Can I can I real quick? Of course. So it's interesting that th these two teams played uh, mid May, and Norwalk won three zero. So um, definitely some interesting things being being done beforehand. I think so. Sorry, Ben, but no, go ahead. Let's hear the analysis from. The uh, I don't know. We gotta think of a name for him by the end of this, Ben. Yeah, Kaysen. <laughs> Kaysen, the commentator. Um, no, I just think coming off a 3-0 win against them previously in the season uh, doesn't play into our favor. Um, you come in thinking it's gonna be easy. Uh, it could be a little loose in the morning, but um, I don't know. I just saw a, a negative slow start from us, and when you're at the biggest stage, you just gotta come out firing, whether it's clearing the ball in your box, but just putting 
no risk upon yourself. So um, I was happy to see him bounce back from that 1-0 de uh, deficit um, to come out fire in the second half was a good response for sure um, in the first round. Yeah, I mean, so we talked to um, Andrew Messer, the coach at halftime, albeit very briefly, and he was not uh, the happiest of, of gentlemen there, um, obviously being down 1-0. So, what, uh, Kaysen, what did you think? What, what would have your message have been to the girls after watching the first half, being down 1-0, obviously not playing well? Um, what would Coach Kaysen's message be? Uh, my, I was thinking to myself at halftime, my clear-cut message would be it's, it's 80 minutes, right? Like, that's such a long time. Um, especially compared to other sports. Soccer always comes down to moments, though. So you can lose a game even if you're dominating the whole thing. Um, but I would just say stay together, and that first five minutes is just an absolute message. And uh, to respond in the first four is crucial. It's, it's the perfect response you could have in a second half. So very proud of them for sure. Yeah, if I'm Lewis Central and I see that happen in that first five minutes of the second half, I'm not, I'm not excited. Yeah, gutted. I mean, that's is the perfect response you could have had. So Yeah, and Jesse Smith, the Lewis Central coach, I mean, he talked about the difference of uh, appearance at halftime, right? He was pumped up, giving everybody high fives, super energetic, obviously elated, um, and Norwalk kind of head down. Yep. They, um, it was just an interesting contrast of halftime walk-offs. Yeah. So, but then, I mean, Norwalk, Case, talk about JoJo Bice. I mean, there's a reason why she's – as good of a player as she is. I'd never seen her play. Yep. So um, talk about dynamic and composed finisher. And yep. Where's she going next year, Case? So she's committed to Iowa State. Or no, uh, so not next year. She's one early commit. No, yeah, so she's going there next year. Oh, okay, she's sorry. a senior. Um, been committed for a while. Uh, Iowa State actually had a coaching change, I'm pretty sure, on that statement. Yeah. And they also uh, retained her with that coaching change. So it's really happy for her. But to, to speak upon her while I'm here, um, I mean, that girl just puts in time like just incredible time, whether it's doing stuff for her, for athleticism, extra stuff. Uh, I've actually been training her for two years now. Um, so to really see that come to fruition is, is amazing, especially her being my very first. And I got, like she's an unbelievable basketball player and we would have sessions before basketball games. Like she's that committed. So to see somebody take over and, and perform at the highest level is it's very rewarding to see it come from somebody who, who puts in the time. Got, uh, 40 goals on the year, plus 11 assists. That's in the regular season. The, I just was looking across. She's taken 126 shots, and so she scored 40 of them. We are talking almost about 30% of the time. She's 33% of the time, whatever, she's yep. scoring. So that's pretty wild. Um, and, I mean, it was just like as soon as she got in behind, it was kind of like, well, there's a goal. Like yep. you didn't even have to. It was kind of automatic, right? Yep. So there's actually times I can actually speak upon two weeks ago. Uh, her and her, her mother texted me, um, hey, she, like, she had a bad performance. And I was like, yeah, why is that? She goes, well, she just she missed a couple shots. I'm like, she's, she still had three goals. Like, it's all right. But sure enough, uh, they got a big game the next day, and she's not too concerned about overdoing it or overtraining. She, we get together, and she just wants to practice finishing for an hour. So, I mean, that's, that's two weeks ago, and I just, I just give her reps, whether it's six yards away from the goal, 12 yards away from the goal, and she's just, just eyes in the corner, just, just reps after reps. So, yeah, she's always she's always doing that stuff, which is uh, no surprise to me why she's three for three today. Yeah, who are your other standouts on that squad? Like, if you've got to name two or three other players that you want to you know, make the team happen. Yeah, um, that's that's tough for me. I hate to do that because I I trade fifteen to twenty of them to be honest. But anybody that stood out that like just made a ton of progress, like so you know maybe have, yep. maybe give us that shout. Okay, a uh, ton of progress to piggy on that one for sure. Um, Regan Holtorf, uh, she's one of the girls that's actually going to be wrapping up her career this year. So she's a senior, so I'm excited to talk about her. But she's the one that really turned a corner in the last year. So I've had her for probably a year to date. Right after last year's tournament, she wanted to start training with me, and she's just absolutely night and day. She's always been athletic, but to really get her feet under control, learning the game, uh, connecting the dots has been huge. And then Anna Larson, uh, she plays the six. Um, she wants to play college soccer someday, and she's only a sophomore, and just talk about being absolutely poised. That's, that's her. So he gets it, moves it. Um, so, yeah, I, I could go straight down the line. There's a lot of seniors, juniors on that team, but as far as progress, those two specifically, a sophomore that's showing up, and then also a senior who's really turned the corner. Love it. So let's get a little plug in. Uh, for yeah, like, we should. For what you're doing, uh, what, these, what their opportunities are, and how these girls have been doing stuff outside of it. So talk a little bit about Casey Performance. Performance and Fitness. Fitness, there yep. you go. So I, I kept that name broad just because I want to do more with them than just soccer specifically. But 
But you also have a background in sports science, correct? Yep. Kinesiology is my degree. Um, so a personal trainer as well. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, if you can't tell by the guns he's wearing oh, here. Oh, get out of here! He did. He was. That's our plug. Like, look, let us on YouTube yeah. because he's worn a shirt that's three sizes too small. No, 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 no. So it was actually, I shouldn't say an accident, but was jo JoJo was my first one um, during COVID 2020. She just wanted somebody to train with. I was with Drake, and they we weren't training either. So we just started training together. Uh, she's an athletic girl, has good feet. So I was like, yeah, sure, why not? And then it's just taken off since then. So it's just an opportunity for players in Des Moines Metro. Just to get a ton of reps, uh, work on their weaknesses, stuff like that. And, um, yeah, she was the very first, and now we're up to 180 kids in the system. Yeah, well, I'll give you a little shout, too. On the, the opposite end of the spectrum, I have a person that I work with whose uh, grandson was looking to just get a little bit more into soccer and lives down in the Norwalk area. And I was like, you know what? You call my boy Kaysen. Mm -hmm. And so he showed up, I think, for one of the winter things, but they're excited because they're coming all summer now, too. So yep. they, uh, they love it. Built-in referral fee, Ben, hopefully for you. kaysen uh, has got me. <laughs> <laughs> Goes around, comes down. Uh, well, so let's talk a little bit about the uh, the other side of the bracket before we uh, just go in on the, the Norwalk Love Fest okay. and we can circle back <laughs> at the end because I think uh, really like the teams that are left in it are, are all kind of thorns in Norwalk's side. So um, they'll end up taking on Waverly Shell Rock, who um, was the second seed. They've only lost once all year, uh, and they beat North Scott 2-1. to one. Um, I don't know if you caught any of that game. I did not. Uh, it was behind us, but it, you, uh, the word is that Waverly Shell Rock is quite good. What do you know? Do you, you did you do know that they played yep. Norwalk a few weeks ago? So, my only two uh, pieces with this that I would be familiar with would be Waverly Shell Rock. Shell Rock we played in a doubleheader a couple weeks ago, and it was like a doubleheader on a Friday night, which I've never heard of. Two yeah. two two games, and they're both shortened games. Uh, supposedly we lost, I think, in a PK shootout. shootout it was one, yeah. yeah, it was one zero. So. That, I mean, it happens. And then DCG is the other that's going to be a big one. I, supposedly they won big today. Um, yeah, DCG I, uh, undefeated on the year, 19-0, yeah. the one seed. They ran rampant over North North Pope 5-0. Yep. And so it was 5-0 at like half. Yep. To give a little perspective on that, we beat – Norwalk beat DCG last year in the regular season, and then we lost them, I believe, in the state semis last year in the tournament. This year we played them for the conference – title and we lost to him in the regular season um and now norwalk's looking for a rematch against dcg hopefully in the title game i think is where they would match up so that would be a big one yeah that's exactly right so dcg 5-0 over north polk um the word we got from them was that they're really athletic uh very direct and just pretty much unstoppable is what it sounds like no offense norwalk yep. or whoever and then uh the, the other, the four seed, five seed game was Spencer as they took on Cedar, Rap Cedar Rapids Xavier. Uh, the Saints rolling out victorious three to one. It's first, like, yeah, all three goals in the first, like, 20 minutes. And so I was thinking there's going to be an absolute thriller, and then it kind of died down. But um, what a start to that game. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think so that ends up giving us DCG, Dow Center Grimes, taking on Cedar Rapids Xavier on Thursday at the top end of the bracket. And then the bottom half of the bracket is Waverly Shell Rock as they take on Norwalk. Uh, the winners of those games will meet on Saturday in the final. Oh, and if you just hear that, we've got 3A games that have just kicked off behind us. Some action going Looks on. Looks like Ankeny so. Centennial 1-0 up over Northwest. Okay, well, we'll, uh, well, let's, we'll wrap things up here and we'll get to some action. Um, follow us for the 3A stuff here soon. All right, here we are again live at the Girls State Tournament on day one. Uh, we just uh, finishing up the, the 3A action. Uh, Blake forgot to turn his cell phone off. It's a great uh, chirp. If you're listening to this on the podcast, check us out on YouTube where we will be covering the games all week long. We've been here all day today. It's been a beautiful day. I think we're all a little bit sunburnt now. Uh, what about you, Matt? Well, I, I guess I'm sorry. I should wait a second. Let me introduce. We've got the Titan Tactician here today, Matt Sahag. Matt, thanks for joining us. Hey, I'm I'm actually good. I watched the the Valley Muscatine game in the shade. So uh, smart uh, man. That's right. But I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Again. Good, great. How you doing over there, Blake? You gonna uh, jump in? I am. This is great. Uh, everything's kind of wrapping up here, but um, weather was perfect. Crowds turned out like crazy. Uh, a lot of goals. A lot of close, good games between the three classes. So should we just dive into the since we have the Titan Tactician, or you want to? No, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. Are you gonna put your uh, your phone on silent there, Hollywood? Yep. No. We're good to go. <laughs> okay, good. Um, well, let's just start on uh, talking about the game that we took on in Blake quick. Uh, just 
before we, because uh, I'm sure we'll get astute analysis from the Titan tactician. So we watched Ankeny, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, Centennial take on Waukee Northwest. Um, pretty Re good game. Yeah, rematch from earlier in the season where Northwest won, one to zero, I believe, but uh, Waukee Northwest won. And um, again, they played on the, the field here, right, uh, right behind the concession stand, so kind of a focal point and good crowd. Obviously, uh, both schools being local. But um, so Centennial goes up early, 1-0, uh, ends up 1-1 one, one going early. into halftime. Yeah, and I think, like, let's just talk really quickly and briefly, Ben, about that. Uh, so Centennial had to run a play for the first, I don't know, 15 minutes or so, scored the goal, and then things changed a little bit, and Northwest gets a penalty, which sounded like it may have been debatable, but where we were at, it looked like a clear penalty, but we were also 140 yards away. Well, uh, referee Charlie Bales also saw it confirmed stonewall penalty he said so uh i couldn't see who stepped up to take it but uh shot low to the right keeper made a great save but uh northwest reacted first and smashed it home to make it 1-1 yeah the penalty kicker got it blocked but then scored the rebound yeah great so reaction awareness. really yeah, right absolutely. like if you're if you're the coach and your uh your kid misses it that's one thing but to have the positive reactions makes it way better um so anyway ends up 2-1 the rest of the game was a little nervy, but I think Centennial, uh, deservedly so, ran out winners. Uh, and so then they will take on Valley uh, on Thursday. So let's talk a little bit about that game, Matt. What would you think about uh, my Valley Tigers? Sure. Well, um, they uh, they got the result. Um, I think if you if you asked them, they probably um, didn't maybe perform as they as well as they would have liked. Um, to be honest with you, how was Muscatine? Uh, well, well, they were tough, and I unexpectedly, in my opinion, tough. Um, to be honest with you, I, I expected to go over there and see the one seed roll uh, Muscatine, but but that's not really what happened. Um, as you would expect, I mean, I mean, Muscatine was a, a, a big, strong, physical, just sort of industrial side who, who fought for everything, uh, played com played very compact and make it and were difficult for Valley to break down. Um, now that said, if a Valley gets an early goal. So again, and I, and I missed the early goal, but I walked over. There was already one nil in the first couple of minutes in the game, and so you're expecting the game to open up very, very quickly. Um, but actually, the opposite happened. Uh, Muc Muscatine just kind of hung in there, and they actually got the equalizer to go one-one, um, which which made it for a tense uh, a first half. Well, when I look just down at the results here for the Tigers over the year, they're undefeated, but then. I see two, one, you know, six goals given up, seven goals, something like that over the entire year. Um, and most of their games, they're shutting teams out and running the score up. So to go into halftime tied up, uh, I mean, we, we asked Coach Chapman what he said, but what would you have said to the, the girls? Well, if I was the coach, I would have said, hey, you're, you're in a quarterfinal in the state tournament, and these quarterfinals are ordinarily never easy. Um, You've got a bunch of different other factors that happen when you're in, a, in an elimination game, uh, such as nerves and pressure that just make things different. And so, um, to me, going into halftime, well, well, first of all, they went into halftime 2-1. Two, two okay. Um, um, but I think even even so, that the, the messaging probably from the sideline was, hang in there, weather the storm, and we've got to get the next goal um, so that, you know, we've got the momentum going into half. And so, really, what happened actually was, um, the, me the me momentum slowly shifted back in the Valley's favor, and you could feel the second goal coming. And um, uh, 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 Avery Galloway actually drew a, fall, a foul uh, just over the halfway line. She had a nice little dive, a little over, over dramatic for me, Avery, but <laughs> uh, it was a great play by Avery, who, by the way, was easily the, the player of the match. She was the best player on the field by far. Um, for one of the reasons being because she wins everything. And, you know, we've, we've watched her play for a long time, but she's involved in everything and every tackle, and she won the tackle, got fouled, um, and then that set up a free kick. Balls get served into the box, and um, and they end up uh, going ahead 2-1, and, and, and it meant a lot going in halftime, I think, up 2-1. Yeah, that's a big difference. Uh, who else uh, was sort of standing out then in the second half? Or were there any muskies that stood out to you? You said no. there was one that was – was there one that was pretty good? I mean, I think they just played cohesively well as a team. To me, I mean, not not there was no really one player that actually stood out to me. They were just tough to break down. Um, and I think, you know, Valley plays, it looks like, with three strikers up front, and they crowded everything. And, 
and Valley tried to play play well would play a lot sideways into the wing and they really couldn't get anything going indirect. Um, and so I, I guess that that's that's one small tactical change that I would make if I was the Valley coach I would or the Valley team I would start trying to play into their center forwards feet and then start playing little balls in behind into their wingers. I think that would open up the game quite a bit. But most of the time, the Valley strikers would get the ball with their backs to where they wanted to go next. And I think it just made for a really compact game. And there wasn't a lot of balls that got played in behind. Um, so. so before we shift to the bottom half of the bracket, uh, Valley will take on Centennial on Thursday afternoon. Um, I know you've seen Centennial play before because we saw him at the pack pitch night. Uh, what, what do you think? It's a pretty big matchup. Tigers are going to be tough to beat. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be a great matchup. So, I mean, you've got two teams into the semifinal, knowing that if they win, they're in the final. Um, Crosstown rivals. Um, a lot of the kids, I'm sure, uh, play together on the same team. Uh, so the, that there's that added element of fun. But, you know, you can – I would anticipate that we'll see some good friends have a little uh, – good little friendly tackles into the game and – and uh, it'll be a nice competitive match, and of course everyone will walk off in handshakes, and somebody will be really, really happy, and the other person will be not happy. Well, it's great because these two teams met in the semifinal last year. What was the score? Um, two one, with Valley coming on, obviously Valley defending champions, but coming on t coming up uh, victorious. So, well, and that sounds the same story here. They met in the regular season, one zero victory for the Tigers as well. So, Centennial will be on their revenge tour here, hopefully, uh, from their standpoint, and hopefully my Tigers will make a couple of tactical adjustments and find themselves in the second consecutive final. Uh, yeah, go ahead, why don't we then. shift down to the bottom half of the bracket. Uh, behind us, we had Council Bluffs, Abraham Lincoln, defeat Dowling Catholic 3-0. Our boy JP over there at Dowling, unfortunately on the, the wrong end of that score line. Uh, it looked like it was really never in doubt, though. It seemed like Council Bluffs sort of scored, and, and that was who we were hearing cheer. And it was the goals were spaced out enough that it wasn't like, you know, boom, 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 it was like goal, and then, you know, some time would pass, and they'd score again, and some time would pass. So I, it just didn't seem like Dowling was in that game much. Yeah, I think I would agree. I've watched a little bit of it, and every time the Council Bluffs had the ball and really it didn't look like Dowling was a bit much of a threat. And I think maybe Council Bluffs, um, Lincoln might be a bit of a sleeper. Um, you know, as they – what are they? they got a lot of wins, 15-3. and three. They've only lost this year to Valley – Scott Catholic and Ankeny. So, and what were their results with Valley and Ankeny like? Uh, two one, they lost to Valley, and they lost one zero to Ankeny. So, I think it's it's cool and a little bit different that we've got a Western side uh, team making some noise. Well, yeah, I was, I was going to just mention. I think it's interesting. Uh, so, Council Bluff, Sam and Lincoln will take on Ankeny, who we'll talk about here in just a second. But no Eastern state side of the state teams in, in the semifinals. Uh, and pretty central Iowa heavy with the uh, and I, gosh, when was the last time a Council Bluffs team that we watched made it this far? Then the, the I guess the, the, the year they had that really tall goalie that was awesome that went to oh, the Lugo. boys' side, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, so then uh, Ankeny, the three seed, took on Pleasant Valley, uh, scored late with about what was it, maybe five minutes left or so, ten minutes left uh, to make it one zero, uh, and so they will round out the final four. So. It'll be Valley against Centennial and Council Bluffs against Ankeny, Council Bluffs Abraham Lincoln, that is. And uh, so, I mean, some really potential tasty final matchups. Uh, I'd, I'd love to see a Centennial Ankeny Hawks final, uh, even though that means that the Tigers aren't there. Yeah, I think uh, Valley's obviously, I think, the favorite, but you never know. That's why you play the games. Isn't that what they say? That's right. Well, regardless, we've got four teams that have played each other, it sounds like, a few different times over the years, or over this last year, and have been close games every, th every time. So we should be in for a treat on Thursday. Hopefully, uh, you guys will join us again tomorrow for the three, uh, sorry, the boys' side. We're going to be here all day, and it's supposed to be beautiful. Uh, otherwise, we'll catch you on Thursday for another great day of girls' soccer, and we'll have a nice recap for you. Um, oh, and we, you know who we need to give one more quick shout-out to? Our boy, uh, Casey Crawl. Casey, uh, performance and fitness, helped us out there for a little bit. Uh, always good to give him a shout. Absolutely. Let's, hopefully those arms, those biceps look a little different on uh, Thursday, Ben. Maybe tanned a little bit. <laughs> uh, thanks again to the Titan tactician, Matt Sahag, for joining us. We'll catch you again next time.